So I just graduated with a degree in anthropology and a minor in evolutionary medicine from UCLA last year. And a few months ago, ChatGPT, this magical AI device has entered the chat. And now people are super excited, but super concerned about the power of chat GPT. It's threatening people's jobs. And I'm wondering if it could threaten our education system. Could my lovely college degree get replaced by the power that AI has? Can chat GPT teach me a subject that I just paid a boatload of money to learn? That is what we are going to be exploring in today's video. So if that sounds interesting, definitely stick around. We're going to be using anthropology today, but if you took a different course or major or degree, whatever in college, this might still apply to you. So yeah, let's see what ChatGPT has to offer. If you've spent any time on the internet lately, you probably have at least heard of ChatGPT, but just really quick, if you don't know what it is, it's basically this artificial intelligence chatbot that is owned by the company OpenAI. And the idea is you can ask it any question and it'll answer your question using common human conversational tone. Unlike Google, their search engine, you look something up and you have things with titles and descriptions. You have to choose the answer that you're looking for. But ChatGPT, you can say, what color is the sky? And it's going to give you one answer that's written as if someone is having a conversation with you that might say, oh, the sky is blue unless it's sunset, in which case it might be these colors. And it's, it's pretty cool. So how does ChatGPT work? When I used ChatGPT for the first time a few months ago, it was really hard to believe that there wasn't a human being on the other side of my computer. The more you interact with it, the more I think you realize that this is so scary that our computers can talk to us the way that they are. And so for anyone who is wondering, ChatGPT basically uses a transformer-based neural network. And don't let this scare you. I'm gonna explain it in a super simplified way. This is not necessarily my area of expertise. But basically, it's just a machine learning model that allows ChatGPT to stand out from some other machine learning models because instead of ChatGPT learning an input one word at a time, ChatGPT is actually able to learn and process an entire input or an entire sentence all at once. And computers don't understand words, but I hope you can see the kind of power that ChatGPT has when you make this decision to program something to understand one word versus a bunch of words strung together in a sentence. And that again makes ChatGPT very different from a lot of other things that we've seen in the past. And so basically ChatGPT was programmed with a bunch of data. It has a huge database and then it was trained on how to access this database and deliver the answer to your questions in a very conversational kind of way. Again, this is very simplified and dumbed down and I can link more technical things, but I hope this gives a basic understanding of how ChatGPT works. So the question that I have today is, can ChatGPT teach me the field of anthropology? I just spent four years getting a degree in this topic. And I'm wondering if this new AI technology could essentially teach me this thing that I spent four years on. Could it write me a course in anthropology? Could it replace a class? All these questions that we are going to talk about right here, right now. So let's just do it. So now I have my screen pulled up and we are looking at ChatGPT on my computer right now. And I have a few questions prepared. So first things first, if I'm hoping to get a degree in anthropology or learn anthropology or whatever it is, the first thing I want to ask ChatGPT is what is anthropology? Let's, let's see what it says. I've, I've played with ChatGPT a lot. I like to think I, I kind of know what it's going to tell me um, or how it's going to do. I, I use it for work and stuff. So yeah, let's see. Okay, so right off the bat, you guys can see that ChatGPT gives a pretty thorough answer, which again, as compared to Google's search engine, usually when you look up a term, it's going to have like your Merriam-Webster basic definition, but this is a lot more thorough. So first off, we have anthropology is the scientific study of human beings, their behavior, culture, societies, and physical characteristics. It's broad and interdisciplinary field that incorporates elements from the social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities. So, so far, I'm not too concerned about it giving me false information, although this does happen. It's just right now, it's doing a very good job. So I'm going to keep reading this. 
and you guys can read this too if you wanna like pause it and, and read it. Okay, something that I do really like about this too is that ChatGPT has not only provided what anthropology is, but it has also provided some of the methods used in anthropological work, um, participant observation, ethnography, surveys, and interviews. I think those are things that a lot of people don't know about anthropology, and I like that ChatGPT included it in its answer. Okay, so I do think that this did a really good job defining anthropology. So for basic generalized information, I think ChatGPT is doing a good job. And I see the last paragraph here talks about how there's four main subfields, culture, cultural anthropology, physical anthropology, linguistic anthropology, and archaeology. Now let's say that I know nothing about anthropology and I'm like, huh, I want to learn more about one of those subfields. We'll go with cultural anthropology. Could you tell me more about cultural anthropology? Let's see what our, our, our friend says. Um, cultural anthropology is the subfield of anthropology that focuses on the study of human cultures and societies. Yes, very true. Again, this is very in-depth, which I really appreciate. And guys, again, isn't this crazy that this is just like a machine that has been taught to talk to me like someone else would talk to me on the computer. This is a very different experience than Google. So this is interesting. So cultural anthropology, it starts out with a few more generalized definitions, and then it dives into one key concept, which is cultural relativism. I do have a video on that if you want to check it out. <laughs> so yeah, so far it's doing a good job of explaining anthropology and defining or like answering my somewhat more specific answers. The thing that's hard here is I do have a background in anthropology, so I feel like I kind of know what direction to take the AI. Since the point of this video is can AI, you know, replace my college education, I'm going to ask it to write me a course. And this is the part that I'm really excited about. So we're talking about cultural anthropology here, which again, if you study something else, maybe test this out with like poli sci or electrical engineering or something. Um, let's say, would you write me a course on cultural anthropology that covers 10 topics and includes readings for each topic. Do you guys think that's specific enough? Sure, okay, let's go with that. Okay guys, this is actually Guys, this is kind of doing a good job, actually. Wow, okay, so it's generated 10 topics, readings, and wow, that's actually really interesting. Okay, so the first thing that I'm noticing is the order's like pretty good. Like we have week one, introduction to cultural anthropology. Then we have the definition of culture, cultural relativism, and ethnocentrism, which honestly, like, agree. I would totally put that in like a, you know, introductory course on cultural anthropology. Um, I know who Boaz is in anthropology. This could just be a poor reflection on my knowledge of it, but I didn't know that Boazian anthropology was a thing. So gotta fact check that, probably is. Um, and then the readings here, Clifford Geertz and Franz Boaz are like huge figures in the field of anthropology. So I do think that it's interesting that they put readings by both of those people in here. Um, so that's, that's a win there. So, okay, I would say that so far week one is looking good. Week two, we have language and communication. That is interesting. I, I personally might put these in like a linguistic anthropology course or like a broader, just like anthropology course more broadly. But again, let's let's see here. Looks good so far, kinship. Okay, the thing that's hard is like, if it's providing you each of these topics, am I expected to go research them? I feel like a lot is falling on me. Wrapping this up a little bit, I'm not gonna just like sit here and like analyze each one of these weeks. I think this is super thorough and honestly like a great starting point for people. Like I would trust some of these readings. And I think that the, you know, the AI does a good job like getting you started, which is how I tend to use ChatGPT anyway, but like the full class experience, I don't know if it's gonna give you that. So, wow, I, first of all, like that is some crazy AI power that it's able to do that. 
Um, so now I want to reflect really quick on just like what I thought of this experience really quickly. If you have not subscribed, definitely do that because I talk about anthropology every week and it's really fun and a nerdy time. And yeah. Okay. Back to the video. <laughs> okay. So the big question was, can chat GPT replace my four year, very expensive college education. And honestly, my conclusion at this point is no. ChatGPT is, you know, new versions are coming out all the time. So this video might even be outdated by the time you're watching it, who knows? But I will say that it does a really good job getting you started. You know, I asked it, what is anthropology? I saw something in that definition and asked what is cultural anthropology? And the definitions that it gave me were really good. But I do think that in terms of direction and if I did know nothing about anthropology, I don't feel like I actually know which topics are the most important ones in cultural anthropology. And I also feel this need to fact check the AI constantly, right? Like there were some works in there that I wasn't actually familiar with. So I'm like, does that really exist? Is that super important in anthropology? And I have a background in anthropology. So what does that say for someone who doesn't have a background in anthropology? So my observations are that it's difficult to know exactly what to ask ChatGPT if you don't have a background in you know, the topic that you want to learn, it cannot replace an education in anthropology. And my final thing is that it's lacking context. A lot of the works and topics that it provided me were good and relevant to anthropology, but anyone like you wouldn't know that from what it told you, right? A lot of the works that it gave were really outdated and old. And like, if someone were to go just read the papers that the AI suggested, and thought that like those papers were still how anthropology works today, they'd be wrong because a lot of those papers were foundational in the construction of the field, but aren't necessarily what the field is today. So context is missing and direction is missing. So no, at this point in time, I don't think the AI could replace the degree that I got, um, but maybe that could change. What do you guys think about AI and the future of technology? Let me know down below. Um, and I hope everybody is having a wonderful Monday. I'll see you all next week. All right, you guys. Bye.